Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Imran Hussain, and welcome to other interview between Albania and Malaysia. Wa alaikum assalam, Imam Abba. I am so happy to have this opportunity to have an interview with Albania. Jazakallah. If I cannot, if I cannot myself be there in Albania, Alhamdulillah, I get a chance to speak with you. Okay. Uh, let me make the first uh, question to you, Shay. Inshallah, Shay, uh, can you explain something? Uh, and what do you think uh, for the future of uh, Europe? Because Albania is in Europe. And uh, what do you think about the paper Euro value based in Islam? Your opinion? We have to qualify our answer by pointing to the evidence which is uh, very great and con increasing constantly that we are now living in Akhirul Zaman and therefore our views concerning the future of Europe have to be conditioned by our recognition of the fact that we are living in Akhirul Zaman. There are those scholars of Islam, and they are my brothers, who are critical of me because of my view expressed in my book entitled an Islamic view of Gog and Magog in the modern world, that we are living now in the age of Yajuj and Majuj of Gog and Magog. There is an abundance of evidence to support me. But they hold on to one solitary hadith, only one solitary hadith, which they misunderstand. There is also an abundance of evidence that we are now living in the age of Dajjal. And that Dajjal is the mastermind who has brought the modern age into being. And they differ with me on that as well. But I'm not going to take them on. No, I am going to move on and leave them where they are. And leave their criticisms as well where they are. And let the people decide who is right and who is wrong. We are now living, uh, Imam, on the brink of momentous change in the world. Universal evil change in the world. The world is about to change like it has never changed before in history. And we must go to the Quran, which says that it is to understand where we are at this moment in history and what is it that lies ahead. Among the things that now confront us, Imam, is the imminent likelihood. I don't know how much time we have left. I cannot say. But the imminent likelihood that an attack on Iran is eventually going to provoke nuclear war. And the nuclear war will pit the Anglo-American Zionist alliance on one side with Russia and her allies on the other. If nuclear war takes place, it is North America, Britain and Europe in particular which are going to be devastating and there will be a substantial reduction in population in North America and Europe. As I said before, Imam, I do not know when this is going to occur. But my studies of Islamic eschatology indicate to me that this is what is going to happen. And then an attack on Iran which can come any day now, is going to provoke that nuclear war warfare eventually 
between these two giants. I call them Gog and Magog. Yeah. Uh, can you explain uh, something about Mercant of Venice? written by William Shakespeare in the Islamic concept because uh, the Venice, you know, is near with Albania, you know? <laughs> and uh, I listened something in your, uh, in your predication explaining something about Riba and uh, Mer Mercant of Venice. Can you explain? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, William Shakespeare wrote this play entitled The Merchant of Venice. If the Jews would have banned that book, I believe they would have banned it. But you cannot ban it. So all that they have been able to do is to try to push it in a corner. What William Shakespeare did was to explain to us in a brilliant way why is it that Christian Europe, this is before the emergence of modern Western secular civilization, why is it that Christian Europe banned riba or usury? It was prohibited. And that prohibition remained in force until the French Revolution broke the back of the Christian church and a riba-based economy emerged in France and then in Europe. In The Merchant of Venice, what William Shakespeare did was to portray the Jew as a moneylender. And this is not false, this is factual. The William Shakespeare portrayed the Jew in Europe as a moneylender. And this is factual. They have been moneylenders in Europe for the last few hundred years. That's their profession. But what William Shakespeare did was to portray moneylending as something evil. Indeed, Allah has prohibited money lending or riba in the Torah. But someone rewrote the Torah to make it haram for an Israelite to lend money on interest to another Israelite. But made it halal for him, or kosher for him, permissible for him to lend money on interest to those who are not Israelites. That is false. Allah responds to that in Surah An-Nisa of the Quran when he says, بَعْدَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَأَخْذِهِمُ الرِّبَى وَقَدْ نُهُ They were taking, consuming riba even though it had been prohibited for them. And so this is clear evidence in the Quran that the Torah was change. We have to thank William Shakespeare for having portrayed the act of Riva as taking the flesh of your brother. Because this was the condition of the loan. That I will lend you this loan, this money. Shylock is saying to uh, uh, to the one who is borrowing the money. I will lend you this money on the condition that if you fail to repay, I am entitled to one pound of your flesh. That is brilliant on the part of Shakespeare. The Jews should recognize that their money lending is evil, it is shameful, it is disgraceful, it is sinful. They should recognize the truth is in the Quran. 
And the Quran has come to correct the distortion of the Torah. They should make Tawbah and they should join with Muslims and get Christians to also join with us in restoring to mankind a riba free economy where money would not be lent or borrowed on interest and also where money would be restored as dinar and dirham so that you do not have the paper currency which can be manipulated and as it loses value people are ripped off and secondly that you can take paper and make money out of thin air both of these are also riba Shay, uh, what is your view for Muslims in uh, Albania and Kosovo? Your view, your... I am happy for the opportunity to address the Muslims of Albania, of Kosovo, of Bosnia, of the Balkans. We are very far removed from you but our hearts were, you, were with you when, for example, Sarajevo was under siege for three years. The whole world of Islam was watching and sad over the affairs of Sarajevo. The message for my Muslim brothers and sisters in that part of the world he said, we now live in an age in which religion is receding from the lives of people, largely as a result of the challenge of modern Western civilization. But the Quran has warned us that if we betray Allah and we give up the deed, Allah can punish us. We can be destroyed. So many nations and civilizations have been destroyed already in history. Afalam yasiru fil Do they not travel to the earth? Do they not see what Allah has done to those who came before us? There appears to be a lot of dilution of Islam now in that part of the world where Muslims now drink alcohol, where previously they did not drink alcohol. And of course this is haram, where women remove the hijab and now dress the way Western women dress, where people engage in sexual relations without being married to each other, which is also haram, where Muslim women marry non-Muslim men, which is not permitted in the Quran, where people form themselves as part of a secular state which recognizes the individual as the unit of the state and then form political parties and vote in elections in a secular state which is built on shirk. And so as they vote, they join in the shirk. 999 out of every 1,000 today are going into the hellfire. Only one will enter Jannah. And so they should heed my words before it is too late. To study the religion, to study the Quran as it ought to be studied, to study Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam, his guidance, as it ought to be studied in order to understand the world today. If they do not, then the consequences are going to be terrible. That's my first message. And my books and my lectures, which are freely available on my website, should help them. My second message is that Allah has prohibited, He has prohibited Muslims in Surah Al-Ma'idah of the Qur'an, verse number 51. Allah says, بَعْدَ أُوذِ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا 
لا تتخذوا اليهود والنصارى أولياء. Oh you who have faith in Allah, do not take the Jews and do not take the Christians as your friends and allies. But Allah is not speaking about all Jews and all Christians, not at all. If you study the Quran, you will come to that conclusion very easily. Well then, which Jews and which Christians? And the answer lies in the words which follow, بَعَدُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْدُ Allah is speaking about a Judeo-Christian alliance. Do not take such Jews and such Christians as your friends and allies who are themselves friends and allies of each other. That Judeo-Christian alliance has today emerged. It is very visible as the Judeo-Christian Zionist alliance. It is that alliance which is waging war on Islam around the world today. It is that, that alliance which has brought the state of Israel into being and protect, is protecting Israel. It is that alliance which waged war on Libya recently and now Libya has become a Zionist state because NATO is in charge, the North Atlantic Treaty, Treaty Alliance, and it's a Zionist, Zionist military force. And so Allah has prohibited you from being friends and allies of the Anglo-American Zionist Alliance. And if you become their friends and allies, what's the price that you will pay? I hope Albania is listening. I hope Kosovo is listening to me. This is the Quran. Go to your ulama. Ask them, what does the Quran say on this subject? Allah says, وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ that if you turn to them for friendship and alliance, you lose your Islam. And Allah has warned, وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Do not allow death to overtake you, and you are not Muslims. And so my advice to the Muslims of Albania, of Kosovo, of Bosnia, is to pay attention to Surah Al-Ma'idah of the Qur'an, verse number 51. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la tattakhidhu al-yahuda wa nasara awliya ba'aduhu awliya ba'ad. Wa ma yatawallahu minkum fa innahu minhum inna allaha la yahli al-qawm al-dhalimi. My second advice to the Muslims of Albania, Kosovo, and Bosnia is to turn to Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, having recognized that we now live in Akhir al-Zaman. He has prophesied that Muslims are going to make an alliance with Rome. That is your prophet speaking. And you should listen to your prophet. He said that you will make an alliance with Rome. Today that alliance is coming into being. Rome today is Russia. Rome today is Russia. Don't worry. Don't listen to those fools who say that Rome today is United States of America. That's foolish. That's rubbish. Rome today is the Byzantine Christian Empire. And when Constantinople was conquered by Muslims, the Patriarch said that our headquarters have now gone to Russia. Russia is the center of Christian, Eastern Christian Orthodoxy. And so you will make an alliance with Rome. Russia is on one side, one face of Russia is Magog, certainly, Magog. But Russia is also Rome, and that's where the Anglo-American alliance are going to get a surprise of their life. They're already seeing it. Now Russia and China have just vetoed Security Council resolutions. 
we condemn Syria, which would allow a military intervention in Syria. No, they will not allow it. And if you attack Syria, you're going to face Russia and China. It's going to be nuclear warfare. There is the evidence. Iran today is in alliance with Russia. Pakistan is moving in the direction of alliance with Russia. And tomorrow, when the big wars start, the Turkish people are going to rebel to take Turkey out of NATO. And the Turkish people are going to make an alliance with Rome. And so Albania and Kosovo and Bosnia should turn to Russia and turn to the Eastern Orthodox Christians with whom your prophet has said you will make an alliance. Uh, I have another question. Do you think uh, Muslims of Balkan will deliver with Takbir of the Italy, capital of Roma, based in hadith of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Because I I read uh, some many hadiths about the Rome and uh, Albanian uh, will no Albanian but Balkanian people uh, de will deliver the, the the Italy with Takbir. Do you have any I, information? I don't think I understand your question. I don't think that Rome in Italy is Rome of the Hadith and Rome of the Quran. No, uh, the yeah, yeah. Is a is a, a rivaya, is a Hadith of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who said uh, the Balkanian people will deliver uh, uh, before uh, the coming hour of Kiyama will deliver the capital of Italy with Takbir, you know? I think it is a, a movement of, uh, of Muslim from Balkan making, uh, making a big progress in Dawa and make, uh, make Dawa every, everywhere in, in Italy and in capital of Italy in Rome because we saw many Muslims of Balkan going to Italy and making Dawa for Islam. Now, I have no knowledge of this hadith, none whatsoever. I know about the capital which will fall to Islam, to Takbir, and that is Constantinople. Ah, okay. Constantinople, <laughs> yeah. not Rome in Italy. It's yeah. another rivaya, but I, I don't know yeah. it is uh, it is uh, Daif or, or Sahih. I yeah. don't know this hadith, I'm <laughs> sorry. Okay. So I can't comment on this hadith. No problem. <laughs> Your view for the alliance of uh, Hugo Chavez of Venezuela and Ahmadinejad. What do you think for this alliance? The alliance of Muslims with Rome will include in it all those who are allies of Rome. The allies of Rome today would be all those who are in opposition to Zionism. So it would be included as a byproduct of this prophecy of Nabi Muhammad that all those who are in opposition to the oppression of the Zionists are coming together in an anti-Zionist alliance. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Allah speaks about this in Surah Al-Baqarah, that if Allah had not caused some people to stand against another, la fasadatil up, there would be fasad on earth. Mm -hmm. And so we Muslims are doing the right thing in reaching out to Hugo Chavez in Venezuela, mm -hmm. in reaching out to Evo Morales in Bolivia, and wherever in the world there are those who are prepared to stand with us in opposition to Dajjal, in opposition to the Zionist alliance that seeks to rule the world, we must reach out to them and make alliance with them. I heard uh, that you are preparing a special book for Dajjal. Can you explain something for his deception?
today, deception of, of Dejal. Because I, I listen, you are preparing a big book in a special book about Dejal. Yes. I, I decided to write a quartet, meaning four books. MashaAllah. On Surah Al Kahf, the Quran. I wrote the first book, which was the Tafsir. Surah Al Kahf, the text, translation, and commentary, or Tafsir. And then I wrote the second book, which was the Ta'wil, or Interpretation, entitled Surah al Kahf and the Modern Age. And then I wrote the third book, Alhamdulillah, An Islamic View of Gog and Magog in the Modern World, which is based on Surah al Kahf of the Quran. And one more book remains to be written. An Islamic view of the Jal, the false Messiah, or the Antichrist. However, I have not been able to write a single line for the last one year because I'm just too busy. I get about a hundred emails every day, and people get annoyed when I say I'm too busy to reply to you. They get annoyed with me. I also am traveling. And the traveler is, lives a difficult life. He's not at home. Um, I don't know when I'll be able to complete this book, Imam. But this is going to be the most difficult book I could ever write. You could not understand the subject of Dajjal. Not nobody. For 1200 years of our history. Nobody would understand and penetrate the subject of Dajjal. For 1200 years ago. It's only in this modern age, for the first time, that Islamic scholarship has a capacity to be able to understand the subject of the child. Salafis are my brother. The Salafis are my brothers. But their methodology is wrong. Their methodology is that you cannot interpret any Quran, any verse of the Quran or any Hadith in a manner not understood and interpreted by the Aslaf, the early Muslims. So there is no new knowledge to come. Mm -hmm. When I say to my Salafi brothers, you stay where you are. We're not going to wait for you. We're moving on. And the evidence is clear the large numbers of Muslims are choosing to accept our views rather than yours. Because Muslims have intellect, they have rational capacity, and they can understand that we are making sense. When, for example, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, the Dajjal will ride on a donkey. The donkey will travel as fast as the clouds. The donkey will have his ears stretched out wide. The Salafi insists, and I'm not being in any way disrespectful to them, that we have to wait for a flying donkey. So I say to them, brothers, and you are my brothers, and I love you, you keep waiting for the flying donkeys. We're not going to wait for you. We're moving on. And we say that the flying donkey is the modern aircraft. And guess what? Yeah. The Muslims around the world are re accepting our view, not yours. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about Akhirul Zaman, that the earth will reveal its treasures for the job. The earth will re reveal its treasures for the job. And the, the treasures are going to come out of the earth for the job. <laughs> and in particular the Prophet spoke about one treasure. He said that the river Euphrates will uncover a mountain of gold. And the people will fight over that gold. 
and the 99 out of every 100 will be killed. But that the believers must not touch that goal. Obviously, this is part of the treasures of the earth which are coming on for the job. The Salafis insist that we must wait for a mountain of the metal to come out of the river Euphrates. The Salafis are my brothers. How many times must I say that? And I'm not waging war on them. How many times must I say that? I don't have any boxing gloves on. No. This is an intellectual discourse. This is a discourse in the world of knowledge. And I have the right to express my views respectfully, of course, but firmly. If you want to wait for the mountain of the metal to come out of the river, I say to you, brother, keep on waiting. But we are not waiting for you. We are moving on. We recognize this to be religious symbolism connected with the job. And we say that that mountain of, the, of gold is not a mountain of metal. No, it's the black gold. It is something which will come from that region of the world which is going to function like gold. And that is oil. And so that mountain of gold has already come into the world. This is our opinion. It is oil. And we say that oil has been functioning as gold. Have they not heard about the petrodollar? The petrodollar is oil functioning as gold. The Prophet is telling us, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, two things. Number one, that petrodollar, you should not touch it. That is a passport to poverty and destitution. You're going to be ripped off. And number two, the oil is also going to be a rope around your neck. Because they're going to cause the entire economy to be dependent on oil. They will make sure you no longer use horses and donkeys for transportation and camels. They replace it with a mechanized vehicle which needs oil. All transportation, the aeroplane, the ships, everything needs oil. Agriculture needs oil for fertilizers. Manufacturing needs oil, the factories. Uh, and so when you are dependent on oil, then they take over total control of oil. And the US dollar collapses and all the money of the world collapses and you're reduced to poverty. You can't afford to buy the oil. But they control the oil. That's why they wage war on Iran. That's why they wage war on Iraq. That's why they wage war on Libya. When they control the oil, and you need the oil, otherwise you're going to have riots. How are you going to get the oil? And you don't have the money. You've been ripped off. There's only one way. And all the governments are going to choose that way, all of them. They're going to go to Israel and beg for the oil. They're going to establish diplomatic relations with Israel tomorrow. I hope I don't live to see that, Imam. <laughs> There will be an Israeli embassy and a diplomatic mission in every Muslim country. An Israeli ambassador in every Muslim country, Imam. I hope I don't live to see that betrayal. I hope I don't live to see that betrayal. But those Muslims out there who have no problem with that, wait and see what Allah will do with you. The book on the Jal Imam requires a knowledge of international politics to understand the hadith. When will the Salafi understand them? When will they understand them? And they keep on saying Imran Hussein is wrong. Don't listen to Imran Hussein. Imran Hussein is misguided. Who is listening to them now? This plain and clear daylight. What we are saying makes sense. 
So you're not going to blindfold mankind anymore. The book on the John, I hope, will clear up the subject, Imam. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, in your analysis, what is the last deception of Zionist movement? And tell something to the audience about Jew and Khazars, Khazars, and the alliance of uh, of Judeo-Christians together today. Today, I think today. I can only answer one question at a time, Imam. Last <laughs> thing <laughs> from the Jal. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam has already informed us. Yeah. He said that the last people to come out to the Dajjal will be women. And a man would have to return to his home and tie down, meaning coercively restrain his wife, sister, daughter to protect them from the fitna of the Dajjal. And so the modern feminist revolution and its attack on the religious way of life represents the last phase of the Jal's strategy. We are living now in an age when cell phones have now become universally present all over the world. Cellular phones yeah. and the wireless internet. But this comes with a price. The price that we pay is that we are now subjected to radiation in the cities of the world. That radiation has a damaging effect upon us. There is a hadith about Akhir al-Zaman. The Prophet said to Islam that one man would have to maintain 50 women. He didn't say one man would have to marry 50 women, no. <laughs> He said that one man would have to maintain 50 women. And those who have been listening to my lectures on YouTube would know that I have interpreted this hadith. That we are now on the verge of a calamitous decline in the birth of baby boys because of that radiation. And because also of genetically modified food and pollution of food and water and so on. And stress of modern life. But most of all, the radiation. The male, male chromosome becomes weaker and weaker. And it then reaches that stage of weakness where it can no longer fertilize the egg. And so baby boys are not going to be born tomorrow. And every time the egg is fertilized, it's going to be a baby girl. And when you have a democratic political system of one man, one vote, one woman, one vote, which is foolishness, which is absolute foolishness. Why? Because Allah says in the Quran, Inna khalaqnakum min zakarin wa unta wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila. Allah created us not as individuals, but as communities, as nations and tribes. So the unit of the state has to be the tribe, the tribe, the community. And it is these, these units, they must come together in dialogue, in dialogue for political decision making, not individuals. Mm -hmm. But when you have this Western concept, this foolish and disastrous Western, Western political system, one man, one vote, one woman, one vote, and you have 50 women to every one man, women are going to rule the world tomorrow. Women are going to rule the world tomorrow. That is the Jaws final triumph, Imam. MashaAllah, <laughs> Lik. Uh, <clears throat> what do you think uh, for crisis in Hormuz, the blockade, you know, in Hormuz. Uh, the Straits of Hormuz. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. What do you think I for think, this strategy? I think that the Israeli attack on Iran is designed, <laughs> is designed to bring about precisely that result. 
that the streets of Hormuz will be blocked. That's what Israel wants. Because once the streets of Hormuz are blocked, no oil can go through. Saudi oil, Iraqi oil, Iranian oil, Kuwaiti oil. And as a result of the blockade of the Straits of Hormuz, you're going to have this phenomenal rise in the price of oil, which is what they want. Which is what they want. And the consequent collapse of the US dollar, which is what they want. That's what the Zionists want. So the attack on Iran is designed to bring down the United States of America as an economic power. To bring down and to cause the collapse of the U.S. dollar. That's what the attack on Iran is designed for, among other things. <laughs> but it'll also cause the collapse of money all around the world. And bring about a substantial loss of wealth yeah. for all of mankind. And those who, those who possess gold and silver are the ones who are going to reap a harvest mm -hmm. when this happens. Uh, I believe that the United States is being led by Israel to its military disaster. That military disaster for the United States is going to take place in that region of the world, both in the sea and on the land. Yeah. Uh, about crisis in uh, Syria, many people died and uh, many catastrophic drawing in Syria. Your opinion about Syria today? Because we <laughs> we listen news everywhere, news, but propaganda, ideology everywhere. There are a number of different factors at work, and we cannot confine ourselves to a single one. Yeah, yeah. We have to recognize that the Alawi who have ruled over Syria these last 40 years or more. Sectarian Alevi, huh? Sectarian. Yeah, they have oppressed yeah, yeah. the Sun majority mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with sometimes barbaric oppression. And so that the Sunni majority in, in Syria should want to seek liberation from oppression of this minority sectarian regime is only natural. Only natural. But the effort now launched, the timing of this effort to bring down the regime is of course a timing which was chosen by the Zionists to be part of what they have termed the Arab Spring. The Arab Spring is meant to blossom into a Zionist summer. The Arab Spring is meant to blossom into a Zionist summer. It has already blossomed into a Zionist summer in Libya. It is, thanks to the Ikhwan al-Muslimun in Egypt, it is moving in that direction in Egypt as well. Because the Ikhwan are very foolishly, and I feel so sad for using this language, Imam, the Ikhwan al Muslimun blindly have very foolishly entered into a marriage with the Egyptian armed forces, a marriage of convenience. Egyptian armed forces have not changed. They're the ones who blockaded Gaza and would not allow any supplies to go to Gaza. These are the same ones who still control Egypt today, who are allies of Israel against their own Palestinian brothers. These are the ones who still rule power hold on to the power in the Egyptian armed forces. And the Ikhwan have aligned themselves just because of this lust for government. And so the same Ikhwan are now also in, in Syria in alliance with the Zionists. It's a Zionist effort to overthrow the government. But there is also a legitimate Sunni effort for liberation from oppression. If the Sunni Muslims of Libya, of, of Syria, can impress upon Russia and rule that our Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, I hope they will listen to me, our Prophet has prophesied that we will make an alliance with Rome, 
not with the Zionists, with Rome. And because our prophet has said that we will make an alliance with Rome, we have now come to you, Moscow, to enter into that alliance with you. That if you bring about a change of government in Syria, and we were to take over Syria, we will still continue to be your friend and not the friend of the Zionists. No. And we will continue to be a friend and ally of Iran. When Moscow hears that, then Moscow would itself be able to bring about that change of regime in Syria. And the Syrian government might be only too happy to hand over power. Because they know that if they continue like this, eventually through a process of attrition, they will eventually fall. And Syria will become, like Libya, another Zionist state. <laughs> this is my advice for the Sunni Muslims of Syria. Uh, do you think uh, for crisis, election crisis in Russia today, you, you saw something, I, I, I think so, for election of Russia today with pancards, I, do you think it is the, it is the move, move uh, uh, strategy moving for uh, collapsing Russia by Zionist movement? Uh, diplomacy of, uh, of Zionist movement, do you think uh, connected with the, uh, with the election crisis in Russia today? Because Russia is not in part, I think so, is not in part of Zionist movement. I think so. The Russian government yeah. has already spoken on the subject. Mm -hmm. Mr. Putin has already accused the Zionists mm -hmm. of seeking to intervene in the Russian elections and seeking to covertly bring about a result it would be beneficial for world Zionists. So the answer to your question is that the Zionists are already fishing. The Zionists are already fishing in the Russian electoral waters. But I don't think that they will succeed because this is God versus Magar. Allah has created them both. And eventually Gog and Magog are going to have to fight each other. It's going to be nuclear warfare. Most of North America and Europe are going to be destroyed. This is written. Allah has spoken in Surah Al-Isra of the Quran, in which he says, وَإِن مِنْ قَرْيَةٍ إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُهْلِكُوهَا قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُوهَا عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا كَانَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَصْدُورًا Surah Al-Isra of the Quran Every town and every city is going to be destroyed. I do not know whether this verse refers to all towns and all cities in the world or only to a special group of towns and cities of the world. Someone more learned than I am will have to come after me to be able to define whether this verse is applicable to all those towns and cities in North America and Europe which are now going to be destroyed when nuclear warfare takes place between Dark and Magar. Yeah, my last, uh, I think it is my last question. What do you think about European Union and the Albanian government? Because they want to be part of this union and join it. Your advice for Albanian government and Kosovo too. Because and Kosovo too want to, to join the European Union. I cannot advise governments. <laughs> your opinion. I can only yeah. advise yeah. Muslims. Yeah. Muslims, yeah. <laughs> yes. I can only advise those who fear Allah and who know that when they go into the grave, they're going to be questioned. Most people today don't care about that anymore. They don't believe that they will go in the grave one day and the angels are going to question them. And these are usually politicians. Hmm. So my advice is for Muslim people 
in Albania, in Kosovo, in Bosnia, that the European Union is now part of the Zionist alliance. Yeah. The European Union bent backwards to fulfill the Zionist request to impose sanctions on Iran. This was just last month. Clear evidence that the European Union is part of world Zionism. If you want to become a part of the European Union, you are entering into the arms of the, of the Judeo-Christian alliance. And Albania and Kosovo and Bosnia must be... The European Union is now part of the Zionist alliance. The European Union bent backwards to fulfill the Zionist request to impose sanctions on Iran. This was just last month. Clear evidence that the European Union is part of world Zionism. If you want to become a part of the European Union, you are entering into the arms of the, of the Judeo-Christian alliance and Albania and Kosovo and Bosnia must be reminded those who care for the Quran there are those who don't care for the Quran they'll just drink their coffee and go home but those who care for the Quran will remember that Allah has prohibited you from being friends and allies of the Judeo-Christian alliance which is also today part of the European community. So it is absolutely prohibited for Muslims to seek to be a part of the European community. Prohibited by the Quran. Yes, Shay uh, is, uh, is a big, big, big deal, I think so, of Zionist movement. But Allah will destroy one day this, this movement. Thank you. And Jazakallah khairan for this time. You are I welcome. thank you. you are I thank you, Imam, for yeah. this opportunity yeah. to address the Muslims of Albania and Kosovo. And may Allah bless you for having reached out to me and given me this chance to speak to them. Yeah, you are if I never get a chance to come to Albania or Kosovo, I'm sending this message to you from Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia that I love you very much and I love your food. I used to eat Albanian food. <laughs>
and that prohibition remained in force until the French Revolution broke the back of the Christian church and a riba based economy emerged in France and then in Europe. In The Merchant of Venice, what William Shakespeare did was to portray the Jew as a moneylender. And this is not false, this is factual. The William Shakespeare portrayed the Jew in Europe as a moneylender. And this is factual. They have been moneylenders in Europe for the last few hundred years. Seven. And therefore, our views concerning the future of Europe have to be conditioned by our recognition of the fact that we are living in Akhirul Zaman. There are those scholars of Islam, and they are my brothers, who are critical of me because of my view expressed in my book entitled An Islamic View of Gog and Magog in the Modern World that we are living now in the age of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, of Gog and Magog. There is an abundance of evidence to support me. Mm -hmm. But they hold on to one solitary hadith, only one solitary hadith, which they misunderstand. Mm -hmm. There is also an abundance of evidence that we are now living in the age of Dajjal. And the Dajjal is the mastermind who has brought the modern age into being. And they differ with me on that as well. But I'm not going to take them on. No, I am going to move on and leave them where they are. And leave their criticisms as well where they are. And let the people decide who is right and who is wrong, North America and Europe. I have said before, Imam, I do not know when this is going to occur. But my studies of Islamic eschatology indicate to me that this is what is going to happen. And then an attack on Iran, which can come any day now, is going to provoke that nuclear war warfare eventually between these two giants. I call them Gog and Magog. Yeah. Uh... Can you explain uh, something about Mercant of Venice, written by William Shakespeare in the Islamic concept? Because uh, the Venice, you know, is near with Albania, you know? <laughs> and uh, I listened something in your, uh, in your predication explaining something about Riba and uh, Mer Mercant of Venice. Can you explain? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, William Shakespeare wrote this play entitled The Merchant of Venice. If the Jews would have banned that book, I believe they would have banned it. But you cannot ban it. So all that they have been able to do is to try to push it in a corner. What William Shakespeare did was to epoch. We are now living, uh, Imam, on the brink of momentous change in the world. Universal evil change in the world. The world is about to change like it has never changed before in history. And we must go to the Quran, which says that it is to understand where we are at this moment in history and what is it that lies ahead. 
Among the things that now confront us, Imam, is the imminent likelihood. I don't know how much time we have left. I cannot see. But the imminent likelihood that an attack on Iran is eventually going to provoke nuclear war. And the nuclear war will pit the Anglo-American Zionist alliance on one side with Russia and her allies on the other. If nuclear war takes place, it is North America, Britain, and Europe in particular which are going to be devastated and there will be a substantial reduction in population in North